In front of me, I have a fantastic GPU. This is the AMD RX 6600, and it's a fantastic option for a lot of people out there looking for an affordable GPU. But there is a big caveat. So in a recent video, I actually looked at the RX 6600 paired with the FX 8350. And the scope of that video was to figure out basically, is the FX 8350 still a capable gaming CPU? And the result was, yeah, it actually is. But a comment pointed something out that's really important. And that is, this card actually may have been bottlenecking the FX 8350. And it's at that point that I realized, you know, buying GPUs right now is a bit of a minefield. So I want to talk just a little bit about that today. Now, at first glance, something like an RX 6600 should absolutely not be a bottleneck for the FX 8350. But that's at first glance because that's if you really just don't look at the specs because they're really important in this case. The RX 6600 runs on a by 8 PCIe lane configuration, which is fantastic if you're on PCIe Gen 4. And it's okay if you're on PCIe Gen 3. But the FX 8350 actually runs on Gen 2, which means I was curious, based on the comment, which was absolutely correct, does this GPU bottleneck that processor? So I looked at a pair of games, one being a very fast paced game, the other one being a single player, a much slower paced and also more graphically intensive game. And the hypothesis put forward was actually that an RX 580 would top the RX 6600 in this use case. Now I didn't have a 580 on hand, but I did have a 480 eight gig reference card. So let's take a look at exactly what the performance difference is. So the first game I looked at was CSGO, and the reason being, this is a very fast paced title, and even with the FX 8350, this game is pushing quite a lot of frames. Now the RX 6600 delivered a perfectly playable experience where the average frame rate was up there around 100 FPS, but the RX 480 eight gig card did top the 6600 and actually by quite a bit 127 was the average frame rate that i saw with the 480. now the one percent and 0.1 percent lows were nearly identical so the actual gaming experience that you would get from the 6600 is very similar to the 480 unless you have a frame counter on and you're really paying attention to the average frame rate because those dips in uh, the frame rate weren't really noticeable on either card once up and running, but it is undeniable. The RX 6600 in this case was bottlenecking the FX 8350. The same could not be said of Hogwarts Legacy, where the RX 6600 scored an easy win over the RX 488 gig card. And I think we're seeing the 6600 flexing its modern architecture a little bit here over the 480. And that leads into kind of the revised hypothesis. If you play a lot of graphically intensive titles that have lower overall frame rates anyways, the RX 6600 with an older CPU is still a pretty good combination. However, if you're playing a lot of esports titles with very high frame rates, then you actually might be inadvertently bottlenecking your system if you're dropping in something like like an RX 6600 into one of these older systems, especially one that only runs on PCIe Gen 2. And this opens up a much larger overall discussion about modern GPUs and where we currently sit with how the market is and how difficult it can be to actually pick the right GPU for you. And it's why looking up your exact configuration on benchmarks is so important because now we have GPUs from Intel that require resizable bars. So if you're on an older CPU uh, with older motherboard, that's just not going to work for you. You have AMD with these RX 6600s on a by 8 PCIe lane configuration. Then you have like the 6500 XTs that are on a by 4 PCIe lane configuration where you're going to see bottlenecking if you don't have the latest and greatest platform with PCIe Gen 4. If you have anything below that, you're going to see some loss in frame rates, especially on the 6500 XTs. Whereas it used to be, you had two main manufacturers, NVIDIA, AMD, and most of their cards were on X16 
And if they weren't, it was because the card couldn't really leverage the PCIe lanes anyways. Everything for a hot minute there was sort of on PCIe Gen 3 anyways. Ah, it's exhausting. So all of this to say that you should absolutely pay a lot of attention to your exact hardware configuration if you get to the point where you think you've decided on your hardware configuration that's when you go in and look up videos with exact hardware configurations that match your own especially if you're pairing some older generation of hardware with newer generation of hardware it's a really good idea to just double check yourself once you think you've settled on a hardware configuration because if you're just throwing in the best budget components that sort of meet your criteria and you're thinking you're making yourself future proof it might not be that simple. So to turn it back over to all of you fine people watching this video, let's embarrass ourselves. What is the biggest hardware uh, malpractice you've ever committed where you accidentally paired something with something else that while still maybe functional, doesn't necessarily play as nice as it could. Let me know your thoughts in those comments down below. Otherwise, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you all in the next video.